Hello. We are on a big, beautiful yacht, luxurious as can be, because today's topic is self-love. So I thought I would give myself some self-love, and of course, our guest as well. Um, <laughs> I have to admit that the hashtag, hashtag self-love, is something that's so commonly used. Some in the right way, some like me, I must admit, I would do like, I'm getting a massage at home today during lockdown, <laughs> hashtag self-love. And like, it got me thinking, you know, when is self-love a marketing commercial term, you know, that advertisements use so that people can treat themselves and buy into products? And when does it mean something more? And honestly, this whole idea of self-love is something more. I almost feel as though... It's not just pampering effort. It's not. Self-love is something that you earn, you know? Like, if you haven't gone through something, an experience, even maybe something painful or something that left a mark on you, you almost don't understand and appreciate that idea or that time of just loving yourself and taking care of yourself. And even though sometimes I feel though people might confuse self-love with selfishness, there's like a fine line there. And I, I wish people would understand that more, especially in Asian societies when we're told to be more selfless. But I truly believe that the more you love yourself, the more you can take care of others as well. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today with our guest who I think is almost here. Yeah. So I gotta get off this bed, this big comfortable bed and go find her. <laughs> All right, let's go. Hello. Leslie Chang and today we will be talking about love and self-love and I think this is one of the most important topics to talk about because not just romantic love but loving yourself is just it is really what it's all about it's all about um, loving yourself fully and accepting yourself fully and I, I love this topic I'm excited to explore it so what is your definition of self-love my definition of self-love is prioritizing yourself, your health, and your mental health first before you can uh, do a good job at loving others. Hello! <laughs> hello! Hello, gorgeous! Hello, hello! We're so bougie, man! I know, right? I have like a little yacht coming to the bigger yacht. Like, what is this? It's an everyday, just a normal Tuesday. Oh, uh, the very <laughs> best for you. Guys, we're like the same height. Oh, oh, hello. Hi, hi. Hi, hi. hi. Cool. Thank you so much for being here. Girl, are you really kidding me? I am it. ready to get my uh -huh. yacht on. Yes. Yeah. Woohoo! Woo Welcome to my yacht. Your Tuesday casual yacht. Yes. <laughs> Oh my goodness, the weather. But I it's love. been a while since I've been on a boat trip. Right? As you know, today uh -huh. we're going to be talking about self-love. Yes. I kind of introduced everyone to this topic first, being like, you know how a lot of commercialized things mm -hmm. use this hashtag, like hashtag self-love, yeah. buy this product, treat yourself, self-love, like pamper yourself. But like, what does self-love mean to you? Oh, to me, I am super pro self-love. Yeah. Um, and for me, it's mainly prioritizing yourself, your health, and your mental health first ah. before you love others. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really, really important thing because I struggled for most of my life um, because I'm a people pleaser. Mm, that's um, so me. Major people pleaser. I'm always like nervous. If this person likes me, does mm -hmm. this person think I'm nice and like good? It's, I think it's a Canadian thing. Because Isn't we it? just want to be well liked. We're we just, just so want to be liked. <laughs> We're just perfect little angels. I think it goes from like my parents. Uh -huh. Like they don't even ask me to get like, oh, don't you don't need to get straight A's. You don't need to do what not. Mm -hmm. But I'm like the kind of like I gotta get like scholarships and like the, I did this for our family. And, Are like, you an uptight queen like me? Super, super, okay. super, super, super. <laughs> but do you think the flip side of that also is like, does when does self love become like a selfishness? 
Like, where do you draw the line? Because some people might be like, I love myself so much. I All I care about is myself. Right. Like, when is that too much? And when do you need to kind of have a shared love as well? Well, first of all, I don't think self-love is selfish at all. Mm -hmm. I think that is such a, a, a toxic kind of uh, image for a lot of people. Because I think people get mixed up with being self-centered as self-love. Yeah. There's a difference between, I'm a love on myself, I'm gonna put myself first so I can love other people better and, mm -hmm. and, and you know, grow as a person. And there's a difference between, you know, I'm the best and I, I should- I don't care about what you yeah, guys I don't are care. Doing. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And so there's a huge difference with yeah. that. But when you're really prioritizing yourself, I think that's the most selfless thing you can do. Mm -hmm. Because once you truly do find that, you know, self-love and confidence, that's when you truly can become the optimal best, you know, friend or daughter or yeah. sister or whatever, wife. Yeah. And um, that's what I came to realize, you know. Absolutely. I came to realize that even though I felt like I was, you know, I loved well and I loved hard, you know, before I really found myself at what? 31, you know. Um, never too late. Never too late, for sure never too late. But uh, I was still, I felt like I, I kind of gave that responsibility to someone else, maybe to make me happy or to make me feel secure or confident. Right, right. But then, as much as that could also destroy you, right? Like the same people could also say yeah, something yeah, to hurt sure, you. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. But then now, like you know, it does. It I I feel a lot more stable with myself. I love yeah. my relationship with myself, which is why I always say, like, girl, you just turned thirty, right? Like you're gonna love your thirties. <laughs> you're gonna love your thirties because I I really feel like I love myself so much yeah. and like even my flaws and and I accept myself a lot more. All right, we're gonna do a few memory lane questions as okay. well. Okay. Okay, how much does it matter to you whether or not your partner also shares this value of self-love? Oh, it's very important. Mm -hmm. I think like open communication and honesty is, is the, makes a relationship very strong. Right. And um, I'm really lucky because my man and I, we're, we, we love to talk about that. Yeah. And, and for me, I'm definitely more vocal about mm -hmm. it than him, mm -hmm. but he has also said that, you know, he's a very shy, typical engineer, you know, <laughs> he's, he's very yeah. to himself. But then um, once we do start having these deep conversations about life and self-love and, and what we love about ourselves, mm -hmm. I think it brought us even more closer yeah, together. It's so course. important. You you can't have have not have that conversation. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, super important. Do you feel like there is a type of action that you can have to kind of showcase self love? Like, is it more of an action? I, obviously, it's a mindset for uh -huh, sure. Uh -huh. But is there something you can do? Because like, just with how we understand self love, mm -hmm. you know, kind of. I, I actually just kind of did a self-love thing for myself uh -huh. is that when we were waiting, I ordered like this really expensive cake that I really liked <laughs> for tomorrow because I was like, I'd had a really tiring two days. Get some sugar in you. Head. And I was like, it's kind of expensive, but self-love, baby. Right, well, self-love can, can be shopping. For, for me, so I, I, I love that too. <laughs> but you know, for me, actually, I noticed self-love is, um, hitting the gym for me. Oh, I like Because for that. me, like, I personally struggle with mental health issues. Mm -hmm. I have depression. It's like my ninth year now. And so that's definitely wow. my go-to. And so even when I don't want to, even when I don't want to love on myself or even when I don't want to leave the house, yeah. the fact that I know that the endorphin's going to hit me, that Absolutely. it's good for my mental and physical health, that's showing self-love for, for me. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like when you push that and you grind, mm -hmm. like you feel even better. Like, ooh, I'm so glad you I did it. You proud of yourself. Yeah. yeah. Especially when it was a tough day. It's like, Leslie, you did it. Like, yes, so you're a strong girl. I feel like all that filming schedule, you'll still find time to like exercise. And, like, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, sometimes great. people get like a little discouraged with, you know, maybe they're really tired mm -hmm. or they're really busy. But sometimes all it takes is like a five to 10 minute workout. You just yeah. follow it on YouTube or something. You're and spending double that time on your phone anyway. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> right? So instead of chilling on your sofa, checking out some social media stuff, might as well just spend like five to 10 minutes. Do yeah. some sit-ups or squats, you know? I like that. It's a huge, it makes a huge difference. Have you, should we hit the commercial? And then when we come back, we can dive in a little bit more? All right. All right. <laughs> Actually, miss being somewhere that's so quiet. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I live in the city, yeah. and like every day it's like buses, trains, ding, ding. Like. But I think that's the beauty of Hong Kong, right? Yeah. Like within, what, half an hour we can get to a place anyway, like this? Yeah. yeah, you get the beaches, you get the mountains. Do you hike? I do hike. Okay. Yeah, I've gotten into solo hiking recently. Just oh. me and my, my little chihuahua, me and my dog. It's what? really nice. Yeah. That's amazing. I, I get lonely really easily, so I rarely like to do things by myself. But then I, I did that once when I was having like intense anxiety one day, and I went, I'm like, oh, that's another self-love thing. Mm. I went with my dog, and I'm like, oh my god, I am loving this. That's so cool. Yeah, listening to a podcast or like, you know, like a book or something. That is the, the, the me time that we kind of have to have sometimes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you feel like there are triggers to your anxiety? Like, do you know what they are? I think there, it's like half-half. Like, half of it, sometimes I just clearly feel that it's just a chemical imbalance in my brain. Like almost like irrational. You can't even pinpoint Yeah, it yeah, is. yeah. And mm -hmm. I think that's that's the case with a lot of people with anxiety. Mm -hmm. You just simply don't know. It's not some... It's actually easier when there is a trigger because then you can focus on the issue and just try to either solve it or just let it go. Or avoid it. If yeah, you know yeah, yeah. Up. But yeah, sometimes, yeah. you know, you wake up with it. Like, I wake up and I'll be like, okay, I didn't have a night. Mary didn't have anything, and yet it's like already coming, like the, the anxiety or the panic attacks. Right. I think that's that's really important to, to not be ashamed or scared of it yeah. or of the topic, and to, you know, not be scared of it. Just, you know, okay, I have anxiety, then I'm gonna do something about it. Do you think that mental health is just not talked about in Asian cultures? I is think, it taboo? I think it's better the last few years, like the last three, four years. Yes. I've been feeling a bit more of a movement, mm -hmm. um, but it's definitely not talked about. Mm -hmm. I always like to remind people it really isn't a scary or a shameful subject. Yeah. The fact of the matter is most of the people in the world do Absolutely. suffer from some form of you know mental illness or mental yeah. health issues. And I think, I think it's the healthiest thing to talk about and it. to address yeah, yeah and I think that's also true love right with your friends with your family just be like hey I'm kind of struggling today yeah. you know I'm gonna need your support or I need you to leave me alone yeah. I, think, I think that's the healthiest thing to do I think people are scared to be vulnerable mm. because it's like we're always kind of taught to you know come out with this front that we're okay everything's okay yeah. and then when you're vulnerable because you you're worried how people will take it right mm -hmm. obviously true friends family will take it and be mm -hmm. like okay let me be here for you like what do you need right now mm -hmm. but people who don't don't understand will be like, oh, like, what's wrong with you? Like, you know, you seem perfectly okay on the outside. Yeah. Like, you were perfect yesterday. Like, you know, yeah. things like that. I can totally relate to that because especially for me coming from like a famous family, mm -hmm. I didn't want to come out and be labeled the depression girl. Uh, I didn't want my family to be labeled, oh, the father of the girl that's depressed, right. the brother right. of the girl that's depressed. And so I, I was nervous about whether or not I wanted to share it publicly, mm -hmm. whether I wanted to talk about it with my friends. Yeah. And the fact that most of the world did kind of know where it was triggered from. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a bad breakup, I yeah. struggled with that, and then, and it was years before I, I came out with, I think it was like three, four years into my depression before I actually came out and officially said it. that, mm -hmm. you know, I was struggling. And, and, but then after that happened, I realized even when it comes to, let's say, the way I talk with my dad, um, he loves me so much, he's very open, thank God. But, you know, mental health and depression wasn't a topic that he knew about, that he yeah. ever talked about. And so seeing his journey into slowly learning about what it is and educating himself and, and so even going to charities with the suicide prevention services, he went to, to the charities with me to oh. really understand it. To see that, that was really inspiring. And that Absolutely. made me also feel more encouraged to talk about this openly because it's not that big of a deal. It's yeah. not a big deal. Mm -hmm. You're struggling, that's fine. Yeah. We're all human. Absolutely. Yeah. And because you just mentioned about the suicidal aspect, I know mm -hmm. I've seen in your interviews that you contemplated suicide yeah. three times. Yeah. Like, that's heavy. And your, that was your, heavy, your yeah. family didn't know about it until you openly talked about uh, it? My brother knew about it. Okay, um, okay. My mom kind of had an idea I could feel. My dad didn't know. So when he first read about it, like, how did I he I told feel? him before. I was like, okay, listen, I'm gonna oh. go public with this because I wanna do some charity work mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. with the suicide prevention services. And I felt like with my music and also with my story, maybe it could help another person, yeah. you know? Um, and I did tell him, and at first it was very much like, are you sure? Yeah. Or like, oh, isn't that really negative? I'm like, see, but that's the stigma. Yeah. It's not a negative topic. Yeah. It's a healthy topic. Yeah. Um, and he was a little nervous, but like I said, thank God his personality is, is not as controlling as mm. like most Asian parents, I guess. Um, and so, you know, he let me do me, and then I, I, I came out with it. And then when he saw the reaction, 
and I showed him some, you know, fan messages, fan letters, yeah. and when he saw the positive impact and the healthy image of it all, he was like, oh, this is actually a really good thing. And yes. I think the fact that at the end of the day, you, it wasn't only just self-love, you valued your life. Aww. And you wanted to show people that you value life, and they should value their lives. You know? Yeah, yeah. Because I think more or less, like, especially with the pandemic, a lot of people are feeling depressed, they're feeling like, where do I go from here? A lot of people are losing hope. It's mm -hmm. very easy to just kind of like, let's just let go. I mean, like, where mm -hmm. do I go from here? Like. It, it pains me, especially now that I'm a mother. Like, mm -hmm. if that happened to my child and I didn't know, or I didn't even observe that in them, like, I would be like, I wish you talked to me about it. So I'm so proud of you oh, for telling him. Oh, thank you. That's yeah. why it's really important to kind of uh, try your best to set a norm in the family to openly communicate. Yeah. I know it is really tough, especially in our culture. Absolutely. It's just, especially, and even if it is out of love, like, oh, I just don't want my parents to worry. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, it's okay to be vulnerable and it's okay to be honest, and it actually makes your bond a lot stronger and Absolutely. closer. Yeah, I really encourage people and uh, even with something uh, like that's not as dark like let's say saying I love you some people get really shy with expressing yeah. their love to their parents or mm -hmm. like you know giving them a hug and I always remind people you're kind of only sacrificing like a few minutes of your embarrassment because you're so shy and like oh my god I've never done this before but with that sacrifice you're gonna have your parents like be super happy. You're gonna Absolutely. see that smile, even if they're like, "Hey, don't do that." Never you know? heard a parent who doesn't want yeah, their kids exactly. to say that exactly. And, and ever since I said that, like my friend was like, "You're right. Like, how come I'm kind of like putting my shyness and my embarrassment above their, their happiness?" Their right? right? Let's find an opportunity for all our audiences to say, "I love me." And I love you to someone that they love. Yes, that is I the love goal me of the day. because I love you. Oh, oh. we get oh. deep here. <laughs> hey, thanks so much. For being here today. Thank you. And I'm not gonna let you go so easily okay. because we have a little game of spin the bottle. Oh, I'm down. No, You're down? I'm down. <laughs> All right, let's Who go am I kissing? Who am I kissing? <laughs> Who am I kissing? <laughs> you shall see. <laughs> All right, so. This is the newest updated version of Spin the Bottle <laughs> because we're actually doing a truth or dare. Okay. And, okay, you're gonna obviously spin. When it lands on it, you can pick out the question and after you read it, if uh -huh. you don't wanna do it, you don't wanna answer it, you can drink this beautiful concoction of, let me tell you right now, soap bread, coffee, Chinese herbal tea, and strawberry mint. Can I give it a smell? I think it's not that bad. You have to make do with some ingredients. It doesn't sound or smell that bad. But if you have a weak stomach, I would probably oh. <laughs> put this on the side. I don't know. But I gotta say, you know, I'm the reigning champ of Truth and Dare. Like, you're very... My, like, nothing stirs me. So, I believe we'll see. that. I know, right? I it's pretty bad. That. In yeah. a way, it's, like, no fun, because I'm just like, yeah, I'll, I'll answer, answer that. Again. Again. And then we'll be like, okay, impressive answer. Oh. All right, but there is a twist, mm -hmm. which is that one of these actually say spin again for Grace, which is, if you spin on that, uh -huh. you get to spin again, and then whatever question it lands on, I have to unfortunately answer. And I'm not very open. Like, each really? time I'm like, I'll just drink. I don't really? want to answer. Yeah. OK, well, I'll, I'll help you shy. answer. I hope you answer. I hope you don't even get that now. Oh, no. <laughs> then we're fine. Then it'll just be you. OK. All right, you ready? Yes. Okay. How many rounds do I get? You can do as many rounds as oh. possible. Oh. You can just answer all the way. You don't even need a spin. OK, OK. OK, OK. No, no, OK, one round, one okay. round. OK. Oh, I like the fast spin. Mm-hmm. It's more unpredictable that way. Dun, dun, dun. Done. I know it will all not phase you, so I'm like, yeah. Oh, no. No. My first time? Okay. Right. Let's check it out. I hope these are good. Oh my god, what? I'm probably not gonna answer then. <laughs> it's okay, but you said you're an open book. I know, but then when I saw my first time, I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> it says, describe the experience of losing your virginity. Oh my god! Okay, okay, well, first of all, first of all, y'all, okay, I would openly answer that if you guys weren't here. <laughs> okay. That's the point of this I game. Have. Oh, raining champ. I know, Ooh. I am the raining champ. Wait, let me think. Wait, describe the experience. Describe the experience of losing your virginity. Oh, God, I can't do that. I'm so proud of these questions. Wait, wait, but see, I this is this is so not fair because if I answer that, it's gonna get on the news, and that's definitely not something that I. Know. Well, this is always a waiting. Okay. Okay. I love. Oh, I'm so proud of this question. I'm gonna. Frame I am it. mad at y'all. I'm gonna frame it. <laughs> All right. 
Bottoms up. Cheers. But no, it ain't gonna be. <laughs> Girl. Girl. All right, here we go. Where's my chai tea latte? I want to cheers her on this. How is it? Oh, it ain't even that bad. Well, I mean, Shh. the ingredients didn't sound that bad. Well, wait, do I have to eat the bread? Do I have... Yes. Yeah. I'm gluten free, y'all. <laughs> That's the dollar challenge! Oh. <laughs> oh my god. You good? Alright. Mmm. Coffee. Chinese medicine cake. That's, yeah. That's great. Coffee cake. Okay. That's great. I feel like this was like, I mean, you didn't finish the drink. You definitely didn't answer this question. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should do another dare. Okay. Yeah. What are you thinking about? We are on a yacht. <laughs> this is the last episode. Listen, girl, if you want me to jump, I am down. Yeah. But I'm taking you down with me. And if I jump, you'll jump. Okay. I'm Let's down. Do yeah. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Really happy to be out here. Right? I want to just soak in this moment. Soak in this moment. I got my SPF 150 on. <laughs>